Hey, I'm Robert Pearson, and this is Follow the Leader. I'm going to sit down on my lunch break and talk about Bible verses that inform what godly manhood should look like. And away we go. We are in Titus. we got to find it. There we go. And we're going to jump around a little bit inside of Titus. we got Titus chapter 2, verse 15, and then chapter 3, 1 through 3. And uh, it's actually because they're all right in a row. So it sounds like jumping around when you write it out, but reading it should be in a row, but mine is on two pages, so it won't be in a row, row. But it was the start of the, the paragraph of the thought. So, here we go. Um, right. These things speak and exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one disregard you. Remind them to be subject to rulers, to authorities, to be obedient, and to be ready for every good deed. To malign no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing every consideration for all men. For we also once were foolish ourselves, disobedient, deceived, enslaved to various lusts and pleasures, spending our life in malice and envy, hateful, hating one another. Then uh, Paul goes from that, making a point that we were uh, saved by the kindness and grace of God through Jesus. Um, but I wanted to focus in on the, the behavior aspect, which is why I stopped there. Um, so the, the assumption here is that you are a Christian man, and then that you're striving to be better. So um, solid ways we can do that. Uh, So these things speak and exhort. So that, that whole section I just read is bookended by talk of the, the grace and kindness of God that he gave us through Jesus, our Savior. Um, so it starts in verse 11 to 14 is um, sort of explaining that point. And then uh, Paul gets practical for a minute before he goes back to the uh, big theological picture of our, our position under grace through Christ which is awesome. Now, Paul, Paul is constantly bumping back and forth between the big picture theology and the little picture uh, practical daily stuff. Uh, don't let the sun go down in your anger and that sort is, you know, a, a truism that uh, comes straight out of Ephesians. And once again, it is surrounded... I feel like I was going to sneeze for a second. Um, by Paul explaining a large theological point comes down to the practical of, you know, don't stay angry for very long, and then goes back to another big, heady uh, theological point uh, to move on. So he does this a lot. Anyway, so what comes to mind? Uh, these things speak and exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one disregard you. He's writing to Titus, who's uh, basically the same kind as Timothy. He's uh, a guy that Paul has mentored very intentionally and has leading uh, churches and small congreg local congregations to get them to a point where they become self-sufficient. Uh, so, uh, it's just a lot of like good basics, right? <clears throat> um, just densely packed in here. Speak and exhort and reprove with all authority. Because when you are following Scripture, you have basically the authority of God behind you. Um, and so you're obviously going to do this in kindness and love because you care about the well-being of the other person. But, you know, we should not be, be timid or allow people to dismiss us. Um, we should be speaking with all authority and let no one disregard you. Uh, it doesn't mean to be rude, but assertive. And it's okay, it's okay to say what you believe is right. Remind them to be subject to rulers, to authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good deed. So as, as Christians, obviously, we are subject to the earthly authorities put over us, right? We have to follow the government that is in place and the country you are in, insofar as that government is not contradicting scriptural truths. So as an example, they say you cannot read your Bible. 
oh, it's too bad. I'm going to read my Bible. Um, you know, going to gather as Christians, going to preach the gospel. I'm going to do things that, you know, may not be legal in that sense. But, you know, if the government says you have to wear pink socks on Tuesday, well, it's it's stupid. And it's certainly something to speak out about. And that's not a government that you should, you know, maybe be involved in, in protests and things. But you should probably wear pink socks on Tuesday because the government answers to God and you answer to the government. So in America, we have this unique position that we can um, fundamentally disagree with our government and we can take steps and be actively involved to change it within the, the rule system, within the legal system and be within our rights to actively work to affect change and overturn laws that we think are dumb, like you have to wear pink socks on Tuesday or whatever. Um, not other, other countries don't exactly have that, that privilege. Uh, and it is, it is a privilege. It's not a right. It's a privilege, um, to, to be able to work and affect your government. And so in dictatorships, uh, I would argue that a good Christian should wear pink socks on Tuesday. And if you don't like it, then move or find ways to work within the system. Um, but you know, peaceable, live, godly lives. The moment that government says you can't be a Christian, now I now I take issue. Now I'm going to start having problems. But and up until then, it's you know, I'll just move. I'll leave. I don't like the the way they're doing business, and there's not a mechanism for me to affect change. I'll just have to go somewhere else, um, which isn't an option, especially in communist dictatorship countries. But those are also the same ones that outlaw Christianity. So. At that point, disobeying the government is, you know, part of the course of being a good person. Um, ready for every good deed, which is just such a huge blanket. Uh, whether it's kind words for somebody with a broken heart or having a, an air pump and a tire iron in your vehicle so you can help somebody change a tire if they need. Um, to just the idea that you would be not just willing to do good deeds, but you'd be ready. You almost expecting like, ah, who can I help today? It's pretty cool. Malign no one, be peaceable, gentle, showing every consideration for all men. Solid. Just don't don't gossip. Don't be mean spirited. Just chill. No reason not to be nice. Um because, you know, we've, we've made mistakes. We were dumb once, too. That's why everybody has such patience with kids. It's like, you, I was a kid once. I know what it's like to be impatient. Ask questions. Where are we going? Where are we doing? It doesn't mean it's not annoying. It doesn't mean you don't discipline them. But you would have understanding. You would be, um, be kind in the way that you would address those things. Because no, you know it's coming from a place of ignorance. And so even, even though people may be older than us or the same age as us, Sometimes they can be uh, morally ignorant, morally immature, and they just don't know any better. And it's you know just come alongside them with kindness and sort of gently, gently show them away along the way. So, what is one key word here? Uh, I gotta say, remind is probably, if I had to pick one word that would stick out, remind. Um, obviously, there's a lot. This passage covers a bunch of stuff. But as far as the thing that sort of ties this passage into the whole flow of the, the book, it's remind. It's, Paul does a lot of reminding. where he, he constantly is talking about salvation, about how we are put in a right standing before God through Jesus Christ. He repeats himself constantly. Um, and this is an echoing of stuff that he said in other other letters, other, um, you know, Romans has a lot of stuff about um, obeying the government. Peter writes that you should, you know, honor the king. It's, it's not something that you wouldn't already know, but say it again anyway, right? Continue, continue delivering those reminders because humans are stupid and forgetful. And sometimes we just need to be reminded. And yeah, it's, you know, you drive a little over the speed limit, 
and you go, ah, it'll be fine, and you get to cruising, and, and then you look over and you see somebody's car is tore up, flipped over, and um, ambulance is there, and medics are pulling them out the side of the car, and you go, oh, oh, you got reminded why there's a speed limit, why you should slow down, and suddenly you start going safe. You knew, you knew already, you need reminding sometimes. We, like sheep, have gone astray, right? Sheep are dumb, forgetful animals so you've got to be stubborn with, and those humans are <laughs> very similar. So, what are ways we can be encouraged by this? Uh, these are some simple things to do, right? Be ready. Um, be subject to rulers, right? Be obedient. Don't be a jerk. This is simple stuff. It's not. It's not a lot of. Uh, not a lot of heady theology. You got to wrap your brain around. It's just straightforward. Good. Don't be a jerk. Uh, do your best. Uh, speak these things. Right. You know. Stand up. Be heard. That's part of being a man. That's why God gave you a mouth. You've got two ears and one mouth, so you can listen twice as much as you speak. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't speak. You should listen more. Sword and reprove with all authority. Remember that you have authority as as a man, as a Christian, as a father, as a husband. You have authority given to you by God over those areas. And just in general, in life, the more that you know about things, the more sort of authority, force of authority you have and should speak up when you see those things happen. Now, when you when you have areas that you can you can speak into and speak truth into into a situation. So, what are we going to change? Are there any ways you're convicted by this? How, how are you going to change something to, uh, to make that right? I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. I think sometimes I don't speak up enough. And it's difficult to find the right way to speak up. You know, what is kind and what is enabling bad behavior, what is... So it's, it's a fine line to walk between saying something that is um, correcting somebody in a kind way and saying something that allows them to think you approve of their lifestyle or behavior or choice they made. Um, and, so, and sometimes you're just going to have to hurt some feelings. It's 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 definitely a case by case basis, and sometimes I I overthink things, and so I'll I'll err on the side of not acting when I, I should probably act. So I don't know, I'll do my best to speak out when when there's a situation I can I can speak truth into. But yeah, a lot of stuff could be doing better. That's why we're here. We're all working on it. One percent, just get one percent better every day. And after two days, you'll be 2% better. So, that's all I got for now. Uh, you're awesome. Thanks for coming along. Go ahead and give me your answers, your thoughts and comments in the comment format. I put this stuff out on Facebook and YouTube and uh, SoundCloud and Spotify. Spotify and iTunes and well because I, I throw stuff on anchor and so everywhere anchor goes All the other stuff goes so wherever you're listening wherever you find me throw me a comment uh, Message find me in a place where you can throw me a comment answer a question ask a question and I'll see you next time Godspeed